Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I was huffing it, coming from a few blocks away. But uh, welcome to the next regular meeting of the Syracuse Public Art Commission. Today is June 13th, and it's a lovely day in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, I'd like to call uh, this meeting to order um, and ask if anyone had a chance to review the minutes. Previous meeting. I'd like to motion to approve. I'll second. Tina, thank you. Manuals for the second. Thank you, thank you. Um, moving right along, since we have our two City as Canvas uh, mirrorless in house currently, um, no old business. Um, we will be joined later by uh, Josh Wilcox to do some discussion on the art park. And we did have a nice little uh, unveiling of the Bloomberg Street Art Mural up front this morning uh, with Jess Whitley, and it was uh, well attended. As Syracuse University showed up in droves because she's a, a Maxwell uh, student, and then we realized apparently so is half of the staff of uh, city government here in Syracuse <laughs> because almost everyone there was like, I went to Maxwell, and it was great. Um, they are doing some uh, articles and some coverage on it, and uh, I spoke on behalf of SPAC, and I winged it, and Kate said I did okay. So. You did just fine. You Thank did you. great. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You were adequate. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, was, I was last, which was strange, because Jess got to speak before me, and I'm like, oh, the artist has already spoken, and uh, uh, the sky is uh, turning, uh, the sun's coming out. This is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but it, it really was, was it great. Was very good. And um, it was uh, nice to have the recognition how Kate and, and SPAC had a hand in making that thing happen and um, now we'll get some seating as well um, and have kind of more of an activation of the space which is cool. Um, so let's get down to it. New business. Um, we'll start with uh, SPAC 2303 um, Great Blue Heron by Cecily Thomas. Uh, Cecily has won the East Side uh, City as Canvas um, um, and you may recognize her from a previous City as Canvas uh, on Larry Luttinger's building. Um, Cecily, if you'd like, um, come on uh, up to the microphone here oh, or come and sit in one of these seats and we'll turn a mic for you. Yeah. You just turn that one for her. Yeah, there you go. Here, right here. Sit. Yeah, you sit wherever you want. Yeah. And that way. That seems easier, right? So, Great Blue Heron here. This is going to be um, at Barry Park um, in our favorite little quirky neighborhood, the Westcott Nation. And uh, so Cicely, um, what I'd ask is that you speak to your new mural that you're going to be starting soon. Yeah, um, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, this one I was excited to prepare something for. Um, I grew up in the neighborhood. Um, I was just thinking about it earlier today that um, when Ed Smith was getting their new playground, like we would walk down and you know, pass that building every day. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been a big deal <laughs> in part of my life. So I'm excited to make it pretty. This is awesome. Do you have uh, um, um, equipment in order and such? Do you need, li you don't um, need lifts this or anything? It's going to be a lot less than before. Okay. Um, probably be fine with just the ladder. Great. Um, I stopped over at Nottingham last week to see if there were any students that were interested in helping out. Oh, awesome. Definitely got a lot of interest there. So Heck yeah. Hopefully that'll also make it go by faster, you know, not take as long. Absolutely. Um, yeah, everybody's excited. That's great. I had actually somebody from the neighborhood reach out because the bird is like a little That's bit good. incorrect. Here it's actually oh. flying their necks claimed a little bit. Yeah. So okay. fix it up a little bit. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's cool to see everybody's excited about it. Yeah, the neighbors in particular uh, keep a close eye on that on that particular edge of the park, so that's a good thing. Um, and there is a blue heron in, I'm assuming that's what, yeah. 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 There is okay. a, a, the neighborhood blue heron in that. Superb, great In the lake, heron, yeah. there, um, the catchment basin. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and obviously, um, we have an unprecedented thing here. We, when Tina and myself and Jimmy got together and kind of co-authored the City as Canvas program, we didn't really 
think that there'd be an opportunity for an artist to get more than one. So it's impressive, and we appreciate your diligence. And, and obviously, Larry Luttinger's uh, um, CDS Canvas is uh, very well thought of, and we appreciate it. I'll let you know, too, um, Michael Calabrese, who came and shot that day, mm -hmm. um, won a, an arts and cultural recovery grant from CNY Arts to document Zario's and your um, murals for this season. Um, and then um, it's noteworthy, too, that Tina is back as the coordinator of City as Canvas and has taken on a new role um, for her personal public life, but it allows her to be the coordinator again. So you'll be back in contact with myself and Tina mostly for this one moving forward. Once you have an idea of when you're really going to get down to it, just let us know and we'll send Calabrese over to get you like all that be real and all the fun stuff too. Um, cool. Does any do any commissioners have any questions for Cecily here? Okay. That silence says we don't. <laughs> um, I, say, I, I appreciated and that maybe the parks department does too, appreciated that you're keeping it within that sort of purpley you're you're keeping that background color because I think there's a lot of pride in that select in that color that's selection. Color, yeah. You know, for yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that just sort of um, uh, winging off of, of that color is absolutely is, is great. And we love that we love the uh, uh, community connection too. So let us know if SPAC can help facilitate. I know that we have some supplies left over in some weird way. Like TNT actually has them from. There, you mean from the um, yeah the asphalt art yeah. Yeah, Jess is going to give it, do an inventory, but there's some, I, and I don't know what type of equipment that you use, but, but Jess was using, Jess Whitley was using a lot of rollers, and then apparently there are quite a number so, of rollers left. So, so maybe, yeah. maybe we save you a few bucks. I don't think you'll need the, yeah. the, the paint itself, which is like for asphalt. But, oh, right. Uh, <laughs> but, the, uh, um, but there is some equipment, the arts and the, yeah. And then per that too, does it say, Cecily, are you using uh, certain products? Are you using Golden or anything like that? I was going to use Golden again. Okay, yeah. Obviously. I actually still have some left over. Cool. Last one, so it's good. Yeah, so let's hit them up again too, because if we give them a little bit more notice and like tell them right now, boom, we got it, yeah. they're really good about like covering and coming our way and even kind of like potentially. So since, I know we tried it the first time, but. Yeah, I have a connection out there too. Cool. So. Yeah, hit them up. Let me know. Um, cause that'd be, that'd be great. And then obviously we'll have, so you're matching over the next. Hoping like by the end of the month I'll have everything. Yeah. So you'll start in July. Start month, yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Um, may I have a motion to motion. vote on motion to Cecily's, uh, yeah, to approve Cecily's video canvas. Uh, Lauren with the first, Emmanuel with the second. All those in favor? It's official. We now have permission, go forth and make art. <laughs> Thank you, Cecily. Um, great, and uh, now I will invite Rosario up to the table. He is SPAC 2304. He's won the Southside uh, mural from City as Canvas. Um, and uh, so, this is the this is the dreaded this is the dreaded uh, fast Syracuse University project of students that made the Southside mural and then didn't really kind of finish it. Finish it, okay. and um, and so it's constantly been a thing, but it's flipping. It's also noteworthy that it's on that block where um, they've got a bunch of new business coming. Um, so it used to be um, it used to be uh, the uh, Co-op. Co-op, and then so right on the next block, Coco's Candles just opened, and there's really, it's really a really centerpiece of the neighborhood. So Rosario um, um, has stayed determined, and he has won the Southside City as Canvas, and we're very pleased to see him sitting here because uh, I think other artists uh, wouldn't have gone and, and submitted their designs to each city is canvas but you made it happen and so congratulations um you, it was his his response at the Southside tnt meeting had the whole entire room rooting for him it was pretty awesome um can you speak to a little bit of how you came Definitely. to the design uh 
I think this whole thing is just a great honor. This is amazing, this program. Um, any artist could have won it. Uh, I just feel very lucky. Uh, the mural, uh, I love creating art. Uh, enjoy the process of it. I think the south side, uh, it's, well, it's an area I grew up in. I went to Corcoran, my grandma, uh, I live right on, off of Newell for uh, the first four years of my life, and then we moved to the valley. Um, and now I work at Roberts. I'm an art teacher at Roberts. Mm -hmm. So yep. this is uh, it's just everything is coming together on the south side for me, it seems like. Heck yeah. Um, as far as the painting, um, it's about bringing just light and peace and unity, community, and a sense of dignity and respect to the, to the south side area. Um, bring something beautiful as well and uh, something people are proud to uh, maybe like, proud to be around, right? Proud to live around this and this could be uh, something, there's a, there's a parking lot in front of it, it could be like a, an area for them to, for everyone to like um, just be and it could be a center in that neighborhood or something like that. Do you, uh, do you, I know that it's summertime and you'll start at a similar time frame in July, obviously. Yes. Do you yep. think that Robert's kids could be corralled a little bit? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Nice. I've been looking to speak to some parents. Um, can't bring all the kids down because uh, most of them aren't over 16. Okay. Um, so the parents would have to come with them. Um, but some, some of the students are very interested, uh, especially the ones who... Uh, like art class, right? So, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a great thing for them to. The woman from the library <laughs> that was at the meeting yeah. um, was like really adamant about helping out too. That's like great. she said, bring flyers, let's go, was I'll take Aussie, it. Was that Aussie Edwards? Yeah. And so I, yeah. <laughs> I think that she could be a great partner in that too because I know that they have summer programs and such. There might even just be the nice. arts program at the library where we can like shake a hand and bring the kids out. It's like already yeah, heck yeah. together. That'd be great. Awesome. Um, do you feel good about um, your materials and such? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Good. Um, I'll, mi I'll mix all the paint myself, so just need a few primary colors, about two gallons of each color. Okay. Uh, more of the primer, about five gallons. Um, we do have the relationships with uh, vendors through TNT. So if you need any help with anything, Tina can hook you up with an yeah, art yeah. store or anything, too. We actually met. And Great. We talked about all that. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so good stuff. So Thanks. you feel good about it, and you'll start sometime in July as well? Uh, as soon as school ends, so maybe okay. a week before July. Okay. Uh, I'd like to start as soon as possible. Great. Uh, school ends the 22nd, so okay. next week. Yeah. All of a sudden. So you want to hit it in June, or are you going to start in July? Uh, start priming, start a little scraping okay. priming in June. Cool. Yep. Um, yeah, let us know, let Tina and I know, and we'll coordinate with Michael, who will come and document your process as well. That'd be great. It's yeah. going to be, um, the, the goal for us down the road is for SPAC to be able to put um, plaques on each of the city as canvas murals with TNT and set up kind of QR codes that go to these videos. And obviously, Black Club, Club Productions did one for Cayetano in the first one. So maybe we've got an opportunity down the road to, you know, kind of have some life to them and continue to let local videographers cover City as Canvas and kind of, so when folks come and look at them, they can click and learn a little more about the process and such. Um, so just uh, keep us aloft to your schedule and right. we'll hook yep. it up. Yep, definitely. Awesome. Any questions for the from the commissioners here? Um, sure. So this this is the building that's already this is the wall you're doing now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this already currently there? That's currently there. Yep, still up. Alright. And uh, who's that artist? Oh, um, your, uh, it was like these students from Syracuse University that did it as a project. Oh, okay. Um, it was a uh, sped up uh, senior project that happened and when we opened it up to the uh, public for picking a building it was like with a bullet number one that's the building we want we want to yeah yeah it was never finished yeah yeah and 
and uh, and then as Kate uh, taught me, um, South Side's one word, <laughs> not <laughs> spaced out like that. So like, uh, so like, uh, there was like a lot of the folks in the neighborhood said, "What about that one?" And the ownership of the building said, "Absolutely." So it was it was kind of chosen as part of that vetting process through TNT. Yeah, I, 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 if people like the full history on that, I can certainly give it to you. But it was, I don't know that any of you were on the board when that, or on the commission when that one came through, but it was, um, there was not really any community engagement. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very um, quick end of the semester, as, as Michael John was just saying, mm -hmm. type of project. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it has never flown. That yeah. that one has never yeah. flown. So yeah, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> awesome. Excellent. Um, okay. Any other questions? All right. May I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Thank you, Second. D. Tavana on the one and Emmanuel for the one two. He's quick on the draw tonight. <laughs> the, um, the, uh, um, with that, um, can I have everyone raise their hand and say, yay, if you're voting for it. Yay. yay. <laughs> um, congratulations, Rosario. <laughs> awesome stuff. And uh, there it is. Two more coming down the pike from City is Canvas. And, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, it's um, awesome, and it is great to have uh, Tina back at the helm here. One more for this season. Yeah, so we're going to do, I'm going to issue the North Side has chosen their building. Okay. It's the Pastime Athletics Club. Whoa. We're going to send Yay. out the RFP, uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Um, so I live on the North Side, yeah. and I've been looking for the TNT meetings. Where mm -hmm. can I attend the mm. meetings? So if you go to the website, okay. you can sign up to the mailing list, okay, and then you can get noticed. Gotcha. But I can hook you up later. That's fine. Cool. Well, Pastimes have got big viewing. That, it's, it's got a, a parking large, lot. Yeah, it's a good spot. It's that, it's that side, the big one with like the know, old school to, mural on it? Mm -hmm. It's like... It has just like... Boxers or something? Um, yellow roller paint, I think. Oh. It says There's a couple of different athletic places I Walls have that, it could be, yeah. that I have to go and, and take pictures and scope it out and see which, which wall they actually want okay. before I send it out to the world. Cool. So. But right. there is the one that's like on the corner there. Yeah. So you, it's huge. I can show you what they sent it's me. It's like three and a half stories. It's like, a, it's like a 40 by 50 or something. It's, yeah. I mean, that would be the space, the wall that's most viewable to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what I have. I have this part. Yeah. Is one. Oh, no. Spot. That's, wait, that's the front wait, side. That's so the, we're yeah. talking about that side. Yeah. Okay. So then also this one. That one. The parking lot There's side. The like two closest sides to Hiawatha. Oh, that's the closest to Hiawatha. I'm talking when the other one yeah, is yeah. actually the one. I don't know. This is what the building. Yeah. Sent you. Interesting. Okay. Um, cool. I feel like the other one is on a corner where there's a stoplight. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'll have to go check yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah. 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 Talk to them. I bike past it. Like yeah. one, so. Nice. So then that will leave. Um, so the valley and yeah. lakefront, and lakefront. Is for next year. And so then that will be all are, eight. We're allowed to do that? Are we allowed to delay it? I thought we had this. We went into. Um, well, so we have. We thought that the contract was through this year mm -hmm. because they wanted us to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. But actually, the ordinance was written till December of next year. Oh, great! Mm -hmm. So to everybody's great. surprise, we actually have longer than that's expensive. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then noteworthy, we're um, chatting here, but um, uh, Rosario and Cecily, even though um, you're still allowed to uh, sit here and be engaged in this public meeting you now have our full permission and can opt to leave and go get a coffee at recess or do whatever you want with your lives. And we appreciate you. Or you can stay. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but if you leave, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. We'll note it in the agenda for next meeting. And, you know. uh, but, uh, but basically, I just wanted to throw that out there to let you guys know, because um, we're about to get really down to it with uh, Joshua here. Um, my man. Step right up. Good, sir. Um, so we're moving on to the discussion half, even though we already started doing that. Um, uh, Josh Wilcox, um, 
is a familiar face, I'm sure, representing city parks. And of course, he was under Emmanuel's tutelage at one point in time, right? <laughs> and uh, so we've, we've brought it up in previous meetings a few times, but we've been interested in a few different things. And a couple months ago, Syracuse City purchased Light Art Park you know, for like the formality of like purchasing it off of the train company that kind of had some land or something. And or I think it was from Sido, was yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So the Syracuse. It's Sido. Development okay. Agency. And so, yeah. and so, with that, um, it kind of brings up. Lipe was birthed in an interesting way, and there used to be a Friends of Lipe Art Park, which got turned into Stewards of Lipe Art Park. Slap because it sounded better than flat. Um, and uh, so it was like a lot of fun back then, but basically <laughs> it was always birthed to be an, an art park, a sculpture garden, if you will. And so unofficially over the years, it, it got birthed out of the gear factory. Um, and then, you know, it had like different folks kind of like coming and going and taking care of it or, or bringing new artwork to it. And then, you know, um, so now Sida, has it, which allows for, or is it CIDA? No longer. Oh, CIDA, CIDA no it. longer has it. Got you, got you, got you. So it is an official city yep. park. Oh, great. Yep. Okay. So um, obviously there's been some research and some ideas, and we want to talk about what can be, because now that it's under actual parks, there's some... Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll just start with the first thing, which is actually happening right now. With okay. Our park. There is a current study being conducted by SMPC. Mm -hmm. It's a study that's all about connectivity from downtown through Light Park Park because it's a perfect route mm -hmm. um, through the west side up to Tip Hill or this Park City, kind of around Grant Park. Sure. We know there's a lot of development happening over in that area as well. So it's a study that um, the Parks Department is very interested in hearing the results from. Um, we would love to you know, make that connection through the park. And what we're really interested in doing is kind of come up with a plan, a maintenance plan, a management plan, inventorying what art is there, what art can be removed, replaced, um, and then really supporting the friends group, uh, really supporting and partnering with any type of group that wants to reinitiate mm. and you know, manage the park a little bit better than what the parks can. Currently, we only mow the area. Um, we have not sent our gardeners out to look at the spaces to really weed garden beds, but um, we do have a mowing contract to keep it all maintained that way. Okay. I know that uh, Randy and the crew who created the uh, pump track yep. um, represent a, a group of uh, staunch individuals that would volunteer any day of the week for something like that. Yeah, I've been talking to Randy, so we came up with a calendar a couple of cool. little pumps around where they have these things that want to switch to the park and want to volunteer their time. Okay. Cool. Come together. I also have been. Uh, oh, Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, I also have been um, meeting once a month with a group at the Mercantile called the Syracuse Urbanism Group that went from zero to 60 and originally it was just an email and now it's like 40 people strong from like ESF and all over the place. And the young um, hotshot um, QPK design really Baxter like Hankin who graduated from Syracuse University, pretty strong urbanist. Uh, um, is we co-founded the group and we're off and running, but the I guess the key is um, it's just like pure unadulterated volunteer bodies ready to rock, so we can turn our attention towards coming and helping a group like that. Um, and uh, yeah, um, they're considering making a Congress for New Urbanism subchapter to even do some fundraising. Um, so it's an exciting time because oh, there's a bunch of people that could help out. The, the great thing uh, with the Friends Group and what we can do as a department is we can help organize events, we can help market these events and get them out, you know, in front of the city network. Um, really kind of get a conglomerate of people down there at one time to manage the park maybe once or twice a year to get it to a, you know, opening and then cleanly we manage those. So that's one and Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. Can I? Um, is, so like when you go down Fayette and into Tip Hill, there's those two, or the, the bridge that's, <laughs> yeah. is that going to be kept 
and turn into a, a cool space as well? So that bridge is not owned by the city. It's owned by the railroad company, the same one that owns the other two bridges. Um, that bridge is also within the study boundary. Yeah. So the study boundary for SMPC to, and I'm not representing SMPC, but we are partnered with them in this study, so we are collaborating with them. I thought the city owned that one that goes to the goes to Fowler. Yeah, yeah, we had some clarification with our engineering department. Thanks, guys. And we Thanks. have some more things yep. to clean up about it because there was some limited access in there. The um, undercarriage, if you will. Yeah, and there's some stuff happening with Gettys Street as well. It's under it, yeah. and that's a, a big pedestrian uh, focus project. Um, getting to the other side, that other side of that bridge of Light Bark Park really is owned by OSIDA. It's the Onondaga County Industrial Development Agency, I believe. Um, OSIDA is on that. Mm -hmm. And with that, that's another municipal agency. So any type of conversations to span across the bridge. We'll yeah. Have to involve them and see if we can get like permissions and go through the whole process. Cool. But it, it would, again, adds more eyes that go through the park, more people that go through the park. And that's yeah. the biggest thing because this is the only real connection um, outside oh, yeah. of oh, yeah, yeah. going right through uh, either side of your boulevard on the other side of the west, uh, side. And on the other side of uh, um, the building there with Panchitos, mm -hmm. there's the tracks, but there's decommissioned tracks yes. that could um, turn into a uh, connector trail. Right. So. Interesting. And that's all interesting things that SMPC will continue to work on. Um, you'll end up having a report that will come out to us and we'll definitely share as much information as we can. Um, it's all under the under the notion that we are going to improve walkability and accessibility from downtown to the west side. Um, like our park itself, where it can come into the picture is it really is with its name the city's first art park. So it's a way that we can market ourselves as a city, but also as staff can market ourselves. Um, sure. And then how the parks department can, you know, jump in and help out whether we can. Sorry. No, go ahead, Tina. Okay. <laughs> um, so the art shark, that wall mm -hmm. that was meant to be a revolving mural wall, is that still going to be an option to have that if the funds are available to have different artists come in and change that out? I wouldn't see why not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they would have to come through here. Like everybody knows mm -hmm. that. Okay. Cool. Yep. Uh, our department's clear that any type of new art installation will come right through spec, go right through the process. Um, we're willing to support um, with any letters or any recommendations that we can make. Um, any of the art that is there currently, yeah. that's where we're kind of at a if or a hand part. Sure. We just got to figure out what is really good, what's in salvageable condition. Stay there, yeah, what can remain? Yeah, okay. There's some paper yeah, and, and, and especially if we're inviting people, what's what is safe still to you know, if people are, are wandering around. And right, yeah. do you know the history of the typewriter? I drive by it every day and I just wondered about it. Al <gasps> Alley it Walker, manufactured, uh, I think, in one of the buildings around there. Uh, so, I just last night, yeah. I watched the 2009 YouTube video about the open in the light bar park, and so mm -hmm. like when it was first founded by the mm -hmm. Friends Group. And it's really interesting because around 80 or 90 patents came out of a single building that was right there. The gear, so yep. The history for the area is significant mm -hmm. when it comes to industrial. And Leip and Brown were pals, and when they got together, uh, a patent like explosion happened, and like 200 some odd patents in like a couple years. Brown was at one point in time um, either president or vice president of all four manufacturing companies in Syracuse, including Smith Corona typewriters. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like an ode to him, but um, that beautiful house on uh, um, West Onondaga that's the big, like, castle brick brown house was, was his, and uh, he kept the Kodiak bear as a pet in the carriage house <laughs> behind a, in a cage and would send people out there to like scare them just for fun of it and uh and you know a lot of a lot of history on that on that guy but uh he he was the big smith corona guy and that took them from whatever into like the age of industry and and the cradle of industry as syracuse was referred to at the turn of the century back then leip has more connections to the building next door in the gear factory so when Rick and Ty and everybody got together and did the research, light just came up in like every way around that area. And uh, they were able to create flap, slap, and so on. And it, it's really cool. It's really cool to see like it being you know, brought back around. But that was Allie Walker. 
through unofficial, not owned by anyone yet, park time. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, Tina's right. It was always meant to be revolving and bring some new work and to that's, it. And that's what I wanted to say, in it, and not to overlay it with regulation or anything, but the, but I, I think that the a friends group, if it is going to be sort of uh, directing, commissioning, you know, what new artwork and so forth is going in, sure. I think it was always meant as sort of a, a place for experimentation, um, new art, not you know, not, right. not your standard stuff, right. um, and, uh, and you know, really a, a, a place where artists could do some experimentation. And I know Tina, you had a uh, installation there. Yeah. Um, Suitcases. Right? Didn't get the vessel. It didn't. It almost <laughs> did, but it did. <laughs> it did get through. It did get through. Um, there. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of leeway in what can happen there, um, mm. and which is pretty exciting. Um, and, you know, and, and different than the other sort of formal parks we have. Right. And there's that some conversation really that we could bring to the table when it comes to connecting with the railroad company. The chain link fence that's along the entire entire back area. Right. That's you know, Allie has come and done a little bit of artwork on the concrete blocks that are just set up there just as a barrier, but right. there's so many different variations of walls that we could almost experiment with as well through creating new surfaces for mural art, graffiti art, um, any type I guess not graffiti art, but you know, mural art. Well, sure. I mean that's not a bad idea, but um, what is the city's relationship to receiving funding? Like, would it, like, would you be amicable to getting like state funding for capital improvements, or is it tricky? Should it go through a nonprofit? Like, how does that work? Non, not, not for profits always work to some extent. We partner with the Syracuse Parks and Cur Conservancy in many ways, which is in many ways to sure. take on funds or to <coughs> take on donations. Um, always working with not for profits always a, gr a great. But now that the park is under our ownership, we have other avenues um, that we could actually look into, like using our own you know, parks capital improvement um, program to start to look at some of the you know, garden beds that might need to be improved or brick paver areas that need to be you know, replaced. Um, even new areas that could pop up in there, we could probably talk about more. I think, I think um, that um, it's also the perfect place for more landscape public art and like if you I'm sure the report will, will show this but it's got like if you just chop it into thirds you've got like the microcosm of any kind of park in essence you know what I mean so like it could use a little revamping in that category too will the city eventually take ownership of the pump track in their proposed skate park I can't really speak to that I'm not not really familiar with the process or the entities that kind of come together with that and yeah there's Couple different um, home headquarters, the Gapstream yeah. Line, uh, the pump track um, people themselves. So huh. there's you know a lot of things happening over there, um, and we think that's good for life just because it's bringing more people down there. Yeah. We're now able to permit the space, which is something that we weren't able to do. So any city event or any type of you know, permitted event, we can actually allow and put crews down in that oh. space to help with management. Oh yeah. There's your budget. We'll turn it up and throw an event and get a budget for the first piece of commissioned random artwork at Light Park. And that's the same permitting process as any other park that we have. Okay. It would be really interesting, like, I, I know you said you had some paper mache things there. It would be really interesting to create a space and a designated space for temporary, we keep talking about temporary painting, yes. but what it's a sculpture park, really. Right. Um, I mean, that art parks have sculpture, so it would be neat to have a rotating sculpture project yeah. there yeah whether it be be a platform where things can get moved in and out or um accepting of um projects that decay over t time or yeah. we set a limit for how long you know a fabric piece goes there or something like that that way we can the island of misfit public art <laughs> well and i feel like there's, I would say that's kind of the the idea that was idea. the there idea was originally of, yes sort of rotating yeah. in and out yeah. of there but we have to accept that yeah. some things degrade to the point beyond their ability to stay on view yeah they need to they need to go having yeah. a plan for that absolutely um yeah might make 
uh, some opportunity for some younger, uh, less experienced artists who mm -hmm. need an opportunity to begin in public work, or some experimental artists who yes. aren't interested in making something in metal, concrete, or wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are opportunities, yeah. like creating the platforms for those mm -hmm. yeah. rotating pieces. Like those are ways the art department can really partner with the park now to, you know, not just allow that self help to really support yeah. them with drawings or site plans. Or whatever that's really needed to bring to the next level. It, it, we are almost up on our lease for Whale's Tale, but we're going to renew it. Renew. We, yeah, the, the city's interested in renewing and it. So, but they, um, uh, I, I have a, a, a sort of a catalog of other available pieces that we we can bring down. So whether or not they go downtown or to, yeah. I think in, in part it's also the comfort of the of Emily and her crew about um, the, the whale's tail is in a very visible spot it still gets plastered with stickers and things from time to time from vinyl time and time. such yeah. So much, yeah. But, yeah but light can get dark and abandoned at and event, yeah. so so I think it's it's just um, I, but but that you know it's that it doesn't preclude um, all sorts of different types of work going in there, and whether or not it comes from the art yeah. or And since since you're here, Josh, and you have such an intimate knowledge of all parks, um, I was I, we actually are kind of quite interested in potentially having another borrowed sculpture for this program, and kind of the goal of um, Whale's Tale has become a bit of an iconic thing on the on the corner there, and um, the general feedback was let's keep it and not switch it out even though that was kind of part of the original plan to switch it every two years maybe it was well the I think what the, yes absolutely I mean it can it can come and it can go at, at will um, okay. I think that there was interest in you know suddenly we turn around and it's been two years already um, yeah. and so I think there was generally real interest in in, in keeping it there for another uh, maybe another couple years yeah um, but that it not having said that, it is a great location. It for, is for public art. So um, maybe Whale's Tale could eventually move to a different location and a new a new piece of art. Show yeah, I think too. people love the net. Well, you know, they love it because it's been there. But then if you put something new, they you know, might they may love that too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, yes. and another neighborhood may really enjoy seeing Whale's Tale. Yeah, right. We do have some of the waterfront. Oh, 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 okay. oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like if I were to, if we were to, like right now, you had to like pick a place of a park that needed some love, would you just go? It's Kirk. <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> like, what would it be? Uh, no, I have I have several that are in my mind that we could okay. really probably partner with and deploy out there. Okay. Um, everything from the Creek Walk to Kirk Park is much needed area. Sure. We have little platforms, little areas that historically have a picnic table on them that no longer has a picnic table on them for hmm. decades. So Tricks. there's okay. many options when it comes to hard surfaces, but also we have a lot of forestry areas and natural areas that would be cool to do the hidden in plain sight type of experience. Yeah. I have a question about the, you mentioned briefly the design of Lape, our, Lape, our park. Mm -hmm. like, what does that process look like? How do you guys go about deciding like where platforms go and where beds go and really it's uh it's a request based process right now because life is so new for this park i, I can't say it's the same as every other park like a historic park like on dog park would obviously go through a large amount of scrutiny and a lot of you know what it's a historic park so we would absolutely need to and want to um take that to the public with life we would like to start with any design um questions coming up with you guys first um, and then take them out to the community if need be. They, with the gear factory right there, they sure. have a huge amount of input. Um, really, it could be shaped to how you desire, how you want it to be. If you want a full blown West Side PT involvement with parks representing the Life Art Park, we, we could work with that. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, there are some parks that we, we come through and do neighborhood engagement, community engagements. We've gone through the north side, the uh, Eastwood neighborhood, the south side. We're currently doing downtown 
community engagement and there's a downtown survey for all the downtown parks. Um, we will get to the west side. So when, once we get to the west side, I'm, you know, as it's on the schedule for, uh, Wolf will be included in that. Okay. And that would be a larger kind of asking the community, what do you want to see here, there, this park, that park. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can work towards the goal of getting a uh, slap, flat, <laughs> back back in order bef like by then so that maybe we can kind of take that input and lay it on paper and right. you know if we if we keep to our schedule of doing community engagements mm -hmm. it's around spring to the summer next year that we okay. probably start to really um looking at a 20 2024 type of fiscal year but um this year we we're catching up on a lot and i think the neighborhoods will see a lot of improvements um is there a, are you still an interim with a um, director, commissioner? Oh, we, we don't have a deputy, we don't have okay. a commissioner, but we are searching. So I think now's a good time to talk about Light Bar Park and get some things uh, going <laughs> before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For real, right? Um, Kelly, just cover your ears for a second while we. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what would be the next steps with Light? With Light? Um, we want to make an assessment on our end from grounds and maintenance and operations yep. standpoint, um, just to make sure that pieces of our are getting mixed and with. Equipment. I may have some some background information too on some of the art artwork that was there previously. And that was the second point. So yeah, yeah. so and I can give you some. There. I yeah. uh, I will shamefully admit um, I was before I came here. I was at Light Bar Park doing some drum photography of it, so okay. I have up to date aerials of. Exactly what's there as of an hour ago. Sure. Um, so I'm willing to share that with the Public Art Commission, cool. um, or just so we can see what's actually mm -hmm. on the ground right now. Yeah. Without taking up, you know. I think we should take a field trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I, I'm, honestly, it'd be kind of nice to actually be in the space and and understand it once you've done your due diligence. I think we openly invite everyone to the table and say come check it out we're considering moving in this direction yep because it, it would be cool, cool to you know beds and really cool areas that have been built up over the years yeah in there and uh reactivating those you know as part of the plan to be there. nice love it i love it oh is there is there input from the crowd there is there input <laughs> <Can I not? laughs> she's so funny um but uh um that's great josh and and um and so i think I think we're all heading in the right direction. I think also next steps is if we're going to do SLAP, we should just do it, right? Yeah. So I think there's been a lot of talk and hypothetical about it, so why don't we just make it happen, friends of LIPE, but obviously right. you come from the park side and then it's open to others for input. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And uh, anything at the Urbanism Club or mm -hmm. SPAC or any other group that's outside the city that wants to, you know, yeah. Feedback or input they want to have on this process because you know art is for everybody. Um, I can, man. We totally like to hear it. That's great, and thank you for being such a, uh, um, a flexible individual and realizing that um, it's not just parks and rec, but parks and rec and art and public art and all those things in between. So uh, we really appreciate um, you, you and your due diligence. Um, I love to, we'd love to see those uh, flyovers. I think maybe yeah. send it to us and we can email it to everybody so they can check it out. Definitely. And then um, I don't know how you want to unofficially create or officially create it. Is it like a, it's just a volunteer based organization, oh, cur right? Cur oh, curate? Yeah. Uh, yeah um, I'm just thinking that it would be when SLAP gets up and running or the friends of group gets up and running whatever it calls itself yeah to come up with some type of guidelines for artists so that it, or kind of this is this is what we are looking for oh gotcha this is what we I, invite uh, yes uh, and and how we're going to go around go about approving yeah. or I you know things have, will have to come uh, through through here but but kind of the way that annika yeah. curates everything for uh, the mm -hmm. urban for the UVP mm -hmm. it would be great if slap was I'm sorry slap yeah that's no, all right <laughs> slap slap whatever the friends are like it actually um, <laughs> like, we're, yeah, we're, we're playing that's we're it, that heavily yeah, involved oh, yeah, in terms slap. of the artwork like let it pass through through the friends group first and get their approval 
um, and then come to the Public Art Commission and the Commission can do its its little bit of due diligence making sure it will. There you go. You know, uh, and yeah, it's safe. I like that approach. Yeah. yeah. And I will mention because, you know, uh, academia and the area is so important. There yes. There's an opportunity with our park for students too. So it's knowing that SU, ESF, Des Moines colleges are in the area. Um, yeah, 100%. You know, any way that we can bridge those connections as well, I think it'd be great. There's ZSF uh, landscape architectural students on the Urbanism Club. Yep. I'll just at open call say who wants to be in part of this one. I'm sure you'll get a hand up. Sure. Um, but I also, way way deep somewhere in our old emails, I definitely was um, at one point in time on flap, not slap. Um, and I have bylaws. I have like the yeah the early bylaws flap and slap yeah. <laughs> yeah I have like early bylaws somewhere I can also ask Martin and Ty who are involved so somewhere deep in my crispy on the mic at yahoo.com email um, I sure I think I have something that I can bring up at least that could I'll send to you and you can kind of be the yeah, edit hack it apart and modernize it a little bit right, right. cool and then uh, the last thing is like getting a date together um, I always feel that it's better sooner than later to kind of come up with a day. So even uh, SPAC and uh, the friends group and all that would like to organize a specific day in July or August. In August. Okay. It could be a, a really cool event just to get some hand, some eyes on the ground, put some hands in the dirt. And sure. Clean it up a bit. Okay. Awesome, dude. There was also a very state community garden there, right? Yeah, in that. Of, of a sort. Yeah, I yeah. know. Jeannie Gleisner, I think, was really involved in that. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Is that something you're only interested in pursuing? Uh, community gardens really anywhere that they pop up. Like there's certain parameters where when they're in the parks we can manage them a little bit better than when they're not. Um, but a lot of the community gardens <coughs> require a dedicated group. Um, if the group was willing to have community gardens, like I wouldn't think that would be a problem. Um, it, I, I do like the there. design spin on things in this park because it is, you know, a little weird, a little odd in this placement where it's at, the ground it's on. Mm. Um, so, you know, like I said, any type of design sense that we could spur in there, we're, our department's willing to help with that. Cool. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Tasha, we thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Somebody does. So, uh, I'm glad to know they're on YouTube. Yeah, right. Oh, You're a single viewer. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's like 17 people on this, and it's not a council meeting. So really? They're so popular. Well, they, there's been some like yeah. IG accounts, but it might be click in, click out, so I don't know. Sure. Well, really so I, I, I pay attention. I like it. Well, <laughs> thank you, Joshua. Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank you. Um, and then just uh, for a last bit of discussion, um, Ruthney, Kate, myself, and Lauren uh, met via Zoom or whatever, Microsoft Teams, and talked at length um, about the new uh, SPAC website. Um, and Lauren's been uh, um, working on uh, the, that side of things for a bit. And we're getting close to our goals. They sent us a bunch of uh, um, templates and things. And um, uh, Ruthney was uh, had some great input, and we actually really uh, um, spent a couple hours really hacking it down with the team that's rebuilding our website. And we have the most magical news that we've ever had at Spec, and that is <laughs> the digital map that has pin drops on every single piece of public art with actual like, you know, an actual directory that we can translate that can be open to the public so anyone can mess with it. It's going to be a part of said website. And, Yay! The, and there's already, it, there's already, um, in the works. Yeah. It's already in the works. Yeah. yeah. So they, they have all the, and what, what we have to do with it at this point, we've, the inventory uh, for the most part has been, um, the public art inventory that is um, has been geocoded and so forth. So it's already in yep. there, um, and uh, we've been working on the just uh, uh, what needs to happen now is is the uh, filling in the additional information. So when you click on, there's actually new photos. Yeah, there's, 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 there's going to be an be... RFP to have a, a real photographer go out and take real photographs of the artwork. 
Um, and then we'll be able to use the information that we have in the files to just populate the is just that, the, the basic information. Is that being done by the data team here? Um, it the the map start was started by the data team oh. and um, uh, yeah, it was working with the data team here and now it's uh, the second secondary is now getting those photographs. Yeah, it's all set up, like the, the network, uh, everything, the framework is all set. The commissioners will be able to put that stuff in, not like you have to go through. The commissioners won't be able like, to, but but whoever, yeah, the public art coordinator will be able to. Oh, you yeah. will? Yeah, yeah. Some so every time chance. we get a new yeah. mural, you can like plug right. it in. I can plug it right. in. Oh, thank God. That's right. Because yeah. otherwise we'd have to wait like right. another two Six years. Six months. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really, it's, um, I, and I think, I want to say that they are, they're updating their information on a quarterly basis, so it may not, um, uh, or I will be updating their information. I think that they can get around to it. At least yeah, we'll within, have some sort of access. I think yeah. it's within yeah. a quarterly. It may even be monthly. I'm not okay. sure, but it's 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 pretty quick. Okay. So. And then I'll let you know that there were 33 examples of public art websites from across the country, and Lauren poo pooed every single one of them, and she then did. made a better version for Syracuse. So. <laughs> I, I I flipped onto one that was acceptable and yeah. then ripped it apart. Yeah. Um, so. I think I had almost 40 comments on it, but we are dividing up um, pages into like who is visiting the website. So we'll have pages for donors, for artists, for visitors. Um, I feel like I'm missing. Yeah, no, it's perfect. It's it's kind yeah. of like the equivalent of like your own personal like subscriber login. Yeah. It will know that that. Yeah. Eli only likes film and video works, and it will kind of like almost like turn them towards that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what what wow. is happening <laughs> is that you can create an account, and then you can subscribe to different functions available through the website. So yeah. it's it'll be it like down. you sign up through your account to get notices. But um, if you come in, like say I'm I'm not from here, and I mm -hmm. just like artwork to see in Syracuse yeah. visitor we home. come up mm -hmm. and then there's I can just look at the site right I don't yes, have absolutely. to like have, to have, have an account no you don't okay. have to have an account okay. that's okay. really that's just true. for people who want to continuously stay involved okay. and updated and want to follow very specific things okay um, it's it was designed precisely for the artist to be like reminder the apps deadline is coming up gotcha. and, and, gotcha. and give it like to interface yeah, yeah but then we realized it could say, be applied hey, to anything notice yeah. there's this opportunity come on, coming out you might be interested in right yeah. um, and who puts that data into the system like is that the public art coordinator having to put that that'll system? be the, the that'll be us yeah because yeah, yeah, they're setting it up so that we can do there's it. a yeah. section we're that's yeah, like we're the, still very preliminarily whoever you put something in boom it goes out to everybody yeah. yeah. So, like, an art, any artist who comes through this commission will have an account on that. They can if they, they can. choose to. Oh, okay, so they yeah. don't have to choose. Yeah, it would. It's totally voluntary. We encourage that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely would think it would be advantageous to have an account. Um, Similar but, to the but registry. But then it yeah. also allows us to kind of mine that data and find out who's responding to what calls and what things are popular and what things are not, and yeah. we can. We can follow that. Stuff heat, on the yeah. Yeah. SEO SEO heat index for our own website so we know exactly <laughs> where they're going. Yes. Yeah. And it looks like we're also going to uh, potentially have uh, an AI chat. Well, yeah, chatbot um, for yeah. FAQs and such. Mm. So, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'd like to close the meeting. Good day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. Adjournment, not discussion. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So the, it's something this is, uh, that we are looking into. The idea the, would be that it would curtail a lot of questions that are being asked yeah. and clarify the process of application <laughs> and potentially donation in the future. Yeah. So that's the idea. Do you guys really talk to those bots? I hate talking to those things. I, don't I, I have, I and know. it never, it's never helpful. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, that, I mean, I'm, I'm not poo pooing it. AI has gotten really good, so it might be worth talking to, you know. Public art is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call and check.
Jerry, just because that's what came to my Jerry. mind. That's his name now. I also have a name for my chatbot, GPT. <laughs> And um, <laughs> an FAQ. A name for it, oh. <laughs> that's a little more interactive. Is really what it comes down to. We're not going to like have like a catch-all. This went way too far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's very exciting, and and uh, everyone um, just uh, like literally give a round of applause to Lauren. She's done a tremendous amount of Thanks. work to make it happen. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, super excited because it's Microsoft and. Teams and you know it's Microsoft Smart, everything and um, I felt like the person who was from the teams that was there was just like okay uh, apparently they have a lot of opinions on what we're going to design and we're going to do it, do it now and so <laughs> we really gave them everything we could possibly give them to make sure that they give us a robust new SPAC website so exciting times. Yep. Absolutely. Wait for that two-hour meeting coming up. I know it's going to be a, a doozy. <laughs> but I'm awesome I know right, <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> All right. <laughs> exactly well uh, awesome I think that does it for today um, exactly. Tina and Elias <laughs> and Elias yeah. Yeah. <laughs> quick on the draw <laughs> thanks very much everyone yeah. go forth and spread